All right, I just wanna do another video exposing some of the hypocrisy of Jacob Thompson. He's a little uh, acolyte, or as I call him, kind of an attack dog for Brian Dillinger. But just gonna show him some of his just blatant and absolute hypocrisy on some uh, particular matters, and, and, and especially regarding to the whole thing of being a leech minister. The simple truth of the matter is that a lot of what JT accuses myself and others of being, you know, leech ministers are exactly what he is. He's a leech minister of Peter Ruckman, for example. Uh, I'm going to show this in the video. This is Jacob Thompson's book known as The Lord of Glory with his uh, graven image on the front cover right there. And uh, you can look through this book, just read through it, you know, uh, get like a PDF copy or something, you know, don't waste your money on this thing. But uh, like I'd say like 60 to 70% of this book is just JT copying the kind of humor and mannerism and writing style of Peter Ruckman. Don't believe me? And I encourage you to look into this yourself, okay? Just pick up any, just any book from Ruckman. Here's one such example I like to use uh, is Ruckman's book on how to teach dispensational truth. Uh, just read through the book or just pick any book from Ruckman. It doesn't have to be this one. And you're going to see JT just copying and mimicking all the kind of humor and kind of, I wouldn't say condescending, but just kind of sarcastic, sarcastic, basically sarcasm, basically, and writing style and mannerisms that Ruckman has in his book. JT just copies all of it. Okay, I'm going to show that in this video, but here's a clip, and that's not the only way that JT is a leech minister. He's also a leech minister from Brian Dillinger as well, but I'm going to show this part of his video. This is the video where he attacks myself and others. Uh, he, go, he even goes after accountable KGB, and to his credit, you know, I'll give him credit on this, does refute uh, Brad's blasphemous heresy of Christ having sinful flesh, but that's besides the matter. I refuted that myself before JT even knew about that, so... You know, I could I could even argue that JT was copying myself and Bob, but I'm not gonna. But here's a part of the video where he essentially is projecting. He's accusing Tim of doing exactly what he does. Watch this. Let me just make sure the volume is up. Last time I tried doing something like this, the volume on the video was not good enough. But watch what he says here. Just watch and watch just, just the hypocrisy. I'll point it out later. He's with Michi will die without Brian's backing. This this is a true thing. Before him and I, let me just go back a little bit. Because he's talking about supposedly Tim's Tim Connor's ministry dying without Brian Dillinger, which is kind of funny. Because who was the one who was promoting JT's website? You know who was promoting JT's book? I guarantee you, JT's uh, news website, news ministry. You know, focusing on the things of the world. I'll, I'll put it that way. Focusing on carnal things of the world, pretty much. Uh, why do you have to get Brian Dillinger? He's always getting Brian Dillinger to promote the stuff. He, I, I've never heard of JT's book before Brian Dillinger promoted it. You know. Why? Because JT, you know, he's accusing Tim of, oh, you'd be nowhere without Brian Dillinger. What, when you look at the facts of the matter, JT would be nowhere without Brian Dillinger either. You know, if Brian Dillinger was not promoting JT's news ministry and his books, you know, JT would essentially, uh, he wouldn't get the money he has, I'll put it that way. So anyway, again, just talk about the projection. A lot of everything he's accusing Tim of doing, JT himself does. That's called being a hypocrite and also projecting, but let's continue on of the sea foaming out of their own shame wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever as i once told tim conan avbtm your sad ex pathetic excuse of mystery will die without brian's backing this th this is a true thing before him and i uh, tim conan broke fellowship i actually sent him a text message the final thing i, I ever said to him you know v via text message or whatever i had said to him i, I told him i said your ministry is going to die without brian and so will yours jt if Brian was not promoting your news ministry and your books, you would be nobody, you know? And that's another thing about JT as well. Whenever you rebuke him or call him out, he just loves throwing his, his accomplishments and achievements in your face because he's a prideful, arrogant little jerk. And, and you may think I'm being harsh, but really, this guy needs to be rebuked sharply, quite frankly. I mean, and this, I've said this before, this is exactly why, you know, guys like me or him in their early 20s ought not be getting into ministry. And I apply this to myself as well, by the way, hence why I'm not into ministry. Okay, I, I work, I have a job. I actually do things, I don't live on the internet, basically. I do daily videos, but it's more of a hobby for me. It's not, I don't consider it, I don't claim to be a minister, you know? It's that simple. Uh, JT claims to be a ministry, but, and it's not just JT. I've seen so many times where, you know, uh, people in their, like, 18, 19, early 20s, when they try to get in the ministry, like, nearly every time they try doing that, they always end up being some prideful, arrogant jerk who, whenever you try to correct them, they just blow up in your face and just get mad. It's not, again, it's not just JT, hence why I've never tried to get in the ministry. In fact, I believe, and I might be doing a video on this, I believe that really uh, the proper age for ministry is, uh, I'd say, 30s or late 20s at best. It's that simple. But 
I'm recovering that again. But JT is a prime example. Just his arrogant, prideful little, just his novice behavior. He may know a lot of scriptures, but his behavior disqualifies him for ministry. And he's a prime example of why these young kids, you know, in their early 20s should not be trying to get into, into full-time preaching and teaching ministry. Because they, they, they build, they kind of, they lift themselves up. They become a lot, very high-minded they start thinking much too highly of themselves. And whenever you try to correct them, they just blow up in your face and throw their achievements in your face. Kind of like the Pharisee in Luke chapter 18, you know, praying to God and just boasting about his accomplishments. It's that simple. But anyway, I can't, probably should stop banging the table. It shakes the mic. But anyway, let's continue on. And it has. He's basically nowhere to be found now. So go figure. Why? Because again, he's not, why? He's, he's a faker. He's not legit. There's, there's no foundation there. He based everything off of Brian's work. He stole all Brian's stuff. He learned everything from Brian. Oh, 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 oh. Stole everything. You know, he again, he's attacking, you know, in the context of attacking him for stealing and basing everything. I want to, let's listen to that again. And I'm going to point out just the blatant hypocrisy. Because again, everything he's accusing Tim of is exactly what JT does. It's that simple. But let's watch this. You sent him a text message. The final thing I, I ever said to him you know, via text message or whatever, I had said to him, I, I told him, I said, your ministry's going to die without Brian. And it has. He's basically nowhere to be found now. So, <laughs> go figure. Why? Because, again, he's not... I mean, look at just the pride oozing out of his voice. Oh, uh, look at him. He's nowhere to be found now. Oh, uh, you know, just pride just oozing out of this kid's voice. You know? And, yeah, I call him a kid because he may be the same age as me, but spiritually, he's just a little toddler. And, and, and no glory to myself, by the way. All glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. You know? Uh, it's that simple. But this, this little arrogant novice just ooze. I mean, seriously, he sounds just like a Pharisee, honestly. It just, it's insane. Why? He's, he's a faker. He's not legit. There's, there's no foundation there. He based everything off of Brian's work. He stole all Brian's stuff. He learned everything from Brian. And it failed because of it. No? Notice that. Uh, well, watch what he goes on to say. Let me just to, to further back up my point. Nothing original there. Anyways. Uh, you See, so notice something. His points are he stole everything from Brian. There's nothing original. He, he based it all off Brian. Huh. Interesting. Because uh, who was the one who bought the exact same red lumberjack shirt as Brian? I mean, look at this. The ex And not just like, okay, whatever, you know. And the thing is, Brian Dillinger was a lumberjack in his previous, you know, I guess, I think it was before ministry. So it makes sense why Brian Dillinger has, you know, these lumberjack sweaters. JT has never been a lumberjack as far as I'm concerned, you know. In fact, from what I heard, he really doesn't have much experience with doing physical labor. Because one time he attacks uh, Jeremy Carter for being tired after stocking shelves, which just shows that he's never done it. Because I, I used to work in, um, I used to do a night, night shift at uh, retail. And believe me, it is really exhausting putting some of these, I mean, especially when you do pet food or especially some of the, especially when you do the cooking food in the grocery section, it can be very tiring. I mean, I, I'll be honest, I mean, especially after eight hours of doing it. You know, and that's, that's again, this little kid has no experience in this kind of stuff. And again, I call him a kid because spiritually he's just a little child, a little toddler who just, you know, needs, I guess, needs some discipline from his parents. But the bottom line is, is that um, there are times where, I, you know, I'd come home from work and just every muscle in my arm is straining, my back is sore, my legs are shaking. You know, it's really tiring. For, for, so for JT to kind of make fun of that and say, oh, you know, you got tired from stocking shelves, you know, you stock shelves at low, it just shows me he's never done it. He's never done any kind of physical labor like that. You know, he's got no experience, but he thinks he's qualified to talk anyway. Again, proving my point of this kid's pride. You know, he's prideful because he thinks he's qualified to talk about it, about stuff he, he has no experience in, you know, which is a bit of a side issue. But again, look at this, you know, um, I think that's called emulation. You know, I think it's called stealing from Brian, you know, copying him, you know, basing off him, off of him, the exact same red lumberjack shirt. Uh, want some more proof on this this is on my uh, website again like i said before you know just pick up jt's book the lord of glory uh, maybe like you can get a pdf copy of it pick it up and just read it side by side from you know you can again how to teach dispensational truth or just any book from ruckman pretty much and you're going to see just 95 percent of jt's book is just copying and leeching off of the kind of mannerism and writing style and sar and sarcasm of peter ruckman you know who's who's really the leash minister it's JT, but again, this is all, I wrote this on my uh, website or blog or whatever you want to call it. Uh, so I wrote here, uh, JT, the leech minister of Peter Ruckman. I gave just, you know, two examples where JT, you know, borderline plagiarizes from Peter Ruckman. 
And these are just two examples. I mean, it's his book, The Lord of Glory, just all through the thing. He's just copying Ruckman, uh, not just in his writing style, but sometimes even coming close to plagiarizing Ruckman too. But I gave one example where, for example, uh, I think it was page 105 of The Lord of Glory. He writes, you know, about the uh, basically refuting the Catholic Mass. And what he writes is very eerily identical to what Ruckman wrote. And, and, and when I mean identical, I mean in, a, in terms of the wording and writing style he uses. It's almost completely identical to what Ruckman wrote, also refuting the Catholic Mass, in How to Teach Dispensational Truth, page 65. You know? Also in page 91 of The Lord of Glory, uh, what JT writes about explaining John chapter 1, verse 18, uh, borderline, again, plagiarize, almost plagiarizes what Peter Ruckman wrote on his footnotes on John chapter 1, verse 18 in the Ruckman Reference Bible, which, by the way, I have on my bookshelf right beside me. You know, it's that simple. Uh, you look up, you, you get the, I could, you know, get it right now if I felt like it, open up to the reference note on John chapter 1, verse 18. It's almost identically, identically worded, or JT almost identically words it to how Ruckman did it. So, who is really the leech minister here? You know, JT does. But here, again, he's prideful, arrogant, and a novice. So, of course, you know, he won't, he can't, he can't see that, basically. His pride is blinding him. And here's just a scripture I want to leave to end this whole thing off. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 6 to 7. Exactly why young kids, you know, ought to not be getting into ministry. And again, I apply this to myself as well. Hence why if I were to try to get into ministry, like maybe take this beyond a hobby, I would wait till I'm at least maybe, maybe like 20 or 29 or 30. You know, it's that simple. Because then at that point, you do have some life experience. But First Timothy chapter 3, verse 6 to 7. Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil, which is exactly what J has happened to JT. You know, when it, when you get into this kind of, you know, possession of full-time teaching at his young age, then you be, you basically become high-minded. Verse 7, Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. Really, the only person he has a good report of are just either Brian or some of his loyal cronies who, you know, just, I guess, think the world of Brian, and if Brian recommends JT, then whatever. But really, outside of Brian's group, there really is no good report of JT, especially from those of us who have you know, used to kind of fellowship with them, but have been slandered by him. Yeah, JT is not qualified for ministry. Again, he may know scripture very well, but his behavior disqualifies him. Because a lot, you look at a lot of the qualifications for a minister, um, a lot of it is actually just based on your behavior, how you act. You know, very little is actually even about, you know, obviously knowing scripture is kind of, you know, obviously you have to know scripture to be a minister. It's that simple. But a lot of the other qualifications are about your behavior, having good behavior. And the kind of, of just immature, childish conduct J, JT displays disqualifies him for ministry, even if he was in his 30s. You know, even if he was at the right age, it would still disqualify him because, again, the conduct. So anyway, I've said all I needed to say. Uh, don't be deceived by JT. Uh, he is, uh, again, a complete hypocrite and a leech minister off Peter Ruckman and Brian Dillinger. So anyway, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.